Good morning and welcome. My name is Kerry Wells. I get paid by MG Marketing in New Zealand and uh, I have the pleasure of sitting on the PMA Australia New Zealand board. Today's session is titled Using Fresh Produce Packaging as a Consumer board, uh, Billboard uh, and it's proudly sponsored by Vizzy. Speaker for today is Lisa Cork and her expertise sorry, is in helping produce companies get more value and more sales from their packaging spend. I've had the pleasure of working with um, Lisa over many years now through a number of roles she has played in the industry and, and I can certainly say that uh, she is very passionate about produce um, and very passionate about what she believes in. If you get a chance um, during some of the breakout sessions I encourage you to, uh, to ask her about uh, a story I've heard told many times before and I won't give you the story, you can ask her yourself. Um, while she was working in the US, I think it was RPO at the time, um, how she was involved in, um, in delivering a truckload of broccoli to the White House after some disparaging comments from George W. Bush, Bush on the product. Lisa is a produce marketing specialist with over 20 years experience and she assures me that she started uh, at the age of 12. She has worked with growers, retailers, importers, exporters, wholesalers and more helping create effective strategies that drive growth. Lisa writes a popular column for Good Fruit and Vegetable Magazine and The Orchardist in New Zealand, is a director of Horticulture Australia Limited and also runs her own successful consultancy business, Fresh Produce Marketing. She's a Californian girl by birth but uh, now calls New Zealand home. She claims to be an avid tweeter and a blogger but I ask that you don't hold that against her. Please welcome Lisa. Thank you, Kerry. And thank you so much to the PMA for inviting me to be part of such an exciting conference. Um, as an American, my first experience with the PMA in the United States was well over 22, 23 years ago as a fresh out of college um, attendee and so it's fantastic to have seen it now come so successfully to Aust Australasia after the past five or six years. So what does fresh produce packaging and billboards actually have in common? And I think they share a couple of common characteristics. First of all, while although a, big, a billboard is large in terms of its surface area, the actual opportunity to convey a message on it successfully is really quite small. Similar to fresh produce packaging. We have a, an opportunity to communicate something on a bag, but actually the physical space that we're able to communicate in successfully is quite small. Billboards are used because they're seen by thousands of people a day. Well, I just heard from Mr. Ferran's session that a produce item in a Woolworths chain nationally has the potential to be seen by 14,500,000 shoppers. So we share that in common. A billboard is part of a marketing strategy. So therefore it's gone into with the intent of understanding your target audience and what you need to say in order to drive a response. And unfortunately, that's where the similarity ends. The difference between the two? Billboards are seen as an advertising and marketing investment. As a result, you approach billboard design with the concept of who am I talking to, what is the objective, and what do I want them to do as a result. In fresh produce packaging, we view it as a cost. We don't see the untapped potential that exists on our bags, the opportunity to sit in front of 14,500,000 people every week and what's locked up in that potential. We would never consider spending $25,000 on a billboard to only put up a grower name or a company name or a product name and yet we actively spend between ten, fifteen, and twenty-five thousand dollars on our produce packaging and do exactly that. We fail to actually speak to the consumer. So, official welcome to this session called 
using fresh produce packaging as a consumer billboard. Over the next 40 minutes or so, it's really my goal to explore with you this idea of can we do more on our inherent produce packaging? Because I think we can. I was lucky enough to get my first opportunity to create a brand 19 years ago for Apio Produce Sales. And we moved from a brand called Irish Spring, which those of you who are American would appreciate. It's actually a very successful part of form of deodorant soap. We moved from a brand called Irish Spring, and I was proud to create a brand called Eat Smart. It was the first time in the US produce industry that a produced grower, packer, shipper had ever created a brand that was consumer focused, not grower or packer or shipper focused. And it was fairly revolutionary at the time, and I'm really, really proud to say that nearly 19 years on, almost in its 20th year, March next year, it'll have its 20th birthday. Since then, I've gone on to work with other companies to create what I think are fairly successful consumer-oriented brands. So Wild About Fruit, proud to say is one of mine, and also the Gotta Love em, the Gotta Love em Avocado brand out of Western Australia. But basically, it's a subject that I am absolutely passionate about, and I'm passionate about it because I feel we are missing out on opportunity. Produce packaging can be so much more of a vehicle to communicate to the consumer if we actually start to shift our thinking about its role. At the moment, we view it as a cost, but we also, as a result of seeing it as a cost, really treat it as almost what I call a plain and perfunctory containment vessel to get product from A to B successfully through the system. Now, if we don't view it that way, then the only other way that we choose to view it is we see it as a medium, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a medium to communicate kind of the legal stuff that you've got to communicate. So you've got to have a barcode, you've got to have a grower product producer's name, you've got to kind of have all these other things on a package. And so we, we use it as its medium format with, again, little consideration given to how do we actually optimize that message for a consumer target audience. And again, I think the potential, the reason for this conversation is because the potential is untapped. Now, what we're going to work with, though, today in terms of setting a foundation, is really what I call a core, a core premise for those of us who are produce marketers. And it's interesting to have heard it echoed in multiple speakers this morning. The concept is the Western stomach is full. So how many of you in this room are interested in increasing your sales? Anybody interested in increasing their sales? You can nod your head. You don't have to even raise your hand. Just nod vigorously. Yes, Lisa, we're interested in increasing our sales. How many of y'all, there's some industry people, how many industry people are interested in increasing consumption? Right, just nod your head, yes, we're all interested in increasing consumption. So we're in agreement that we want to drive sales and we want to increase consumption. The question I have, and I'm an eternal optimist, but the question I have is, have you ever sat down and thought about the challenge of doing just that? Right, I want to give you just some numbers. So at the moment, the average Australian, and I apologize to the Kiwis, I didn't have the numbers immediately at hand, the average Australian consumes about three and a half serves of fruit and vegetables a day. Now our targeted goal for optimal health and what we view as an industry is we would love to see them consuming seven serves a day. That's in essence a doubling of consumption. Let's just be a little generous towards the consumer and say, let's just get it up to six serves of fruits and vegetables and nuts per day. Anybody want to take a guess at how many kilos that works out to annually per person? It's 123 kilos. Now that's not just new kilos. That's kilos in addition to the 123 kilos that they're already consuming currently. Now, various sources on the internet suggest that the average Western consumer takes in about 800 kilos of food per year. Throw another 123 kilos into the mix, and that's an additional 15% of the diet 
that needs to be dedicated to fruit and vegetables within the existing 800 kilos. 15%. That's huge. We know the Western stomach is full. People are not going to physically eat any more food. So where is that growth going to come from? I think it has to come from substitution. Substituting out of a product, and I love the work that the banana industry is doing in this space at the moment, substituting out of muesli bars or other quick energy snacks and saying, instead of eating that, eat a banana instead. Because that's what we're actually asking the consumer to do in order for them to increase their fresh fruit and vegetable consumption. They have to substitute. Now, here's where it starts to get interesting. Because what's the most likely place where we're going to get that substitution happening? We know that there's going to be some out-of-home expenditure on food, and we've heard that the PMA is committed to doubling food service fruit and vegetable consumption. So I'm not going to touch on the out-of-home consumption of fruit and veg. What I do want to focus on, though, is within the typical supermarket environment. And what scares me is we put our products out there to be seen by all of these people. And it's almost as if we wish that they could kind of see past the packaging to the product inside. But what we fail to take into account is that they don't just have the choice of our products. They actually have the choice of 20,000, 30,000, sometimes even up to 40,000 other products to spend their money on. But yet we're asking them to substitute away from one of those products and into fresh fruits and vegetables. So let's think realistically about who our competition is, because it's definitely not other fruits and vegetables. To me, our competition, and particularly for the sake of just taking this exercise through, our competition is packaged foods, right? We've heard about, you know, we just heard Joe Cross say, you know, 60% of the American diet's based on processed and packaged foods. To me, they're our true competitors. But has anybody ever stood in the supermarket aisle, particularly either in the cereal section, the muesli bar section, or the lovely, charming, what they now call children's fruit snacks section and looked at just how tough our job is if we're going to drive change based off of substitution. Our job is huge. So I want to just explore three issues. I want to explore who is the competition and that's kind of thinking about it in a very macro sense. I want to explore with you who's competing in my space. So who else is out there trying to own fresh fruit and vegetables that needs to be on our radar and how are they doing it? And thirdly, I want to talk a little bit about trends that are driving growth because that's a really significant opportunity for us if we can harness it. So who's the competition? Well, we've talked about the fact that I think it's got to be packaged foods because we're focusing in on a supermarket environment and we're expecting consumers to operate to a substitution principle. But what do we know about packaged foods? Well, first of all, we know that they get that their packaging is an in-store mini billboard. Both products are 100% real fruit. But which would a child prefer? Packaged food companies are savvy, sophisticated, knowledgeable marketers. They are driven by ensuring every square centimeter on their package is optimized to appeal to a buying shopper. Right? What do we do in fresh fruit and veg? I need to tell you my story about pears. Two weeks ago, in my local supermarket, Shopping for fruit, because as the women in the audience know, we don't actually put specific fruits down. We just put fruit, and then we buy based on what looks good on the day. And I got attracted into the pear aisle. And there sitting in front of me was this bag of pears. 